Sorry, I'm late. I think we're good to go, Brian. All right. Uh, welcome to the Bellingham Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, May 6th meeting, uh, 2021. The first item on the agenda is for a variance for 206 Mechanic Street. Um, I'll make a motion to open the hearing. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Quick, I'll, um, I'll read the public hearing notice real quick. Sure. The Bellingham Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on May 6, 2021 at 7 p.m. remotely via the Zoom online option for the request of a use variance, Section 240.12b, to the use schedule, Section 240-31, Section 240-61e1, which is parking area design and location, as well as a variance for, to the intensity of use schedule, Section 240-40, to allow for a warehouse distribution use within a B1 zone that would other, otherwise not be allowed, as well as to allow for the maximum building height to exceed that what would otherwise be allowed in a B1 zone at the property of 206 Mechanic Street, Bellingham, Mass, Assessor's Map 52, Lot 3. This property is zoned industrial and business one. Applicant is Right. Howland Development, Wayne Finnegan, 155 West Street, Wilmington, Mass, 01887, and owner is BAS Realty Trust, Edward and Judith Moore Trustees, 6 Blackstone Street, Bellingham, Mass. The application may be viewed at the town clerk's office, 10 Mechanic Street, during regular town hall business hours, or, at, or online at bellinghamma.org zoning board page. Any wish to be heard shall attend at the time and place above. Um, Brian, if you don't mind, I, I'd give you guys kind of a high-level overview of what this, what the heck all that just meant. And, uh, <laughs> and, then, uh, and then I know the applicant's here, and I'm sure he can go into greater detail. Um, but so what you have in your package today uh, is the narrative uh, with, a, with the responses to, you know, your, the, the, the patented with the three issues of what the variance requests are, um, your application, and um, a plan in place. Uh, so you should have all of that in your Dropbox packet tonight. Uh, specifically what the requests are here is, um, you guys know the location, it's, it's Maple 140, the corner there, uh, the old Hudson location, uh, you can't miss it. And, um, and this property, you know, has a, has a long history uh, at here. Uh, the zoning at this location is uh, business one at the very corner of the property and industrial to the, if you're looking at it from Mechanic Street to the left and all the way into the back. Um, and so uh, the request here is to, to not only utilize the industrial zone, um, and I'll remind you it's industrial zone plus 30. Our zoning bylaw gives a little bit of grace to 30 extra feet. Um, and then uh, into and then eating into the business zone as well. Um, you know, it's it's a unique thing to our bylaws that you can't put a warehouse in a, um, a business zone, uh, but that's how that's how it reads. So that a use is, a use variance is required if they are to move that building into the business zone. In addition, um, the height of the building, as as I'm sure the applicant's going to discuss. But you guys all know the history in town. Many of these industrial buildings um, rise to you know 40 feet in height, 41, 42 sometimes. And in a business zone, it's only allowed to go up to 35 feet. Uh, so the request is to exceed that 35 feet. And um, I know I've already had some early discussions with the applicant, so I, th I think he's going to be addressing some of those uh, issues uh, <laughs> specifically in terms of height. And then lastly, it's the location of the driveway. So the location of the driveway is if you're if you're you're orienting yourself and you're looking at the property from Mechanic Street to the left of that is the Lindemeyer building. And that Lindemeyer building is kind of close, that, that warehouse is kind of close to the Mechanic Street. Well, their their driveway is actually on the far side to the right, which butts up against this property. And so that that puts uh, this property into um, have some concerns. So basically the driveway is technically too close in accordance with our bylaws. So those are three specific variances that are being requested tonight. Uh, and just to go over kind of the process too. So, you know, 
this board tonight, even if they, you said absolutely to all three of these, you're not granting a warehouse development. What you're granting is the opportunity for the applicant to come before the planning board next for um, you know what would be if it stays this concept, a, uh, a special permit as well as the development plan, stormwater management permit, um, and maybe some others, as well as a notice of intent from conservation. Uh, so tonight it's really discussing these three um, variances in relation to moving from the industrial zone to the business one zone. And I think the applicant will certainly be able to describe to you essentially why he's requesting this. Okay. Uh, Jim, just one question. Yep. Did you um, go over, you were saying about the 30 foot kind of rule. Does that mean that where they have the line between industrial and business that they're allowed more or less 30 feet, they could kind of encroach on either side. Exactly right. So it gives, uh, this, our zoning bylaws give kind of a, a grace. So you can butt right up to that property line or that zoning line and then 30 feet over. So this is this comes into play quite often because we have a lot of split zone parcels in town. Um, so yeah, we, we've seen this fairly regularly and it's kind of, it, most of the time it acts just like this. It's similar uses. So industrial with business zone, um, you'll see a lot of residential and suburban zone kind of joined together. Uh, sometimes the agricultural zone plays plays a role. Um, so, you know, for example, across the street, actually, um, when we did the apartment complex permitting, they actually had agriculture in the rear, and we allowed for them to go those 30 feet into the agricultural zone and, and put their, their parking and, and et cetera uh, back there. So, so yeah, so there is, there is that grace period there at 30 extra feet. Okay. And the applicant then is uh, Wayne Finnegan is speaking on behalf of the applicant. So Wayne is the developer and John uh, from Bowler, I believe it will be uh, presenting this evening. Okay. Is he on? Yes. Yep. We, we are on. Hi. Hi, John. <laughs> How are you? Good. Do you want to, I guess, like Jim was saying, do you want to kind of walk us through kind of the development of the plan and a absolutely, absolutely. Um, and if I could share my screen, I can show you some graphics and hopefully make this go a little, a little smoother and easier to to follow. Yeah, you should be able to now, John. Perfect, perfect. Uh, Jim, Jim did a great job of, of doing the um, doing the overview. It's really a high level, exactly what we're what we're looking to do. Y'all are familiar with the um, with the property. Um, bear with me. Let me share screens here. Okay, did that uh, uh, see my screen? Yeah. Great. Um, okay, perfect. So that, that's the, the property that we're looking at. It's, it's highlighted in, in, in red um, here. It's about 10, 10 acres, you know, contains some, some structures scattered throughout the property, cleared out areas, some parking. A lot of that back area was cleared. You can't see um, all of it based on the, the fence that there, but some of that back area was cleared out. And it was really the old um, Hudson um, facility it was a bunch of cars stored, stored back there. What we are looking to do is construct 124,000 plus or minus square foot uh, warehouse distribution facility. Um, and to get to this point, we've, we've been at this for, for a couple months now. We've had multiple conversations with uh, staff and different folks within the <clears throat> within the within the town. We really wanted to get any comments um, up front from the the submittal prior to coming uh, before you. <clears throat> so we've had a so, bunch um, of. Can I just ask just a quick question? Sure. Um, so I think um, Jim said to me, just for scale, it's about half the size of the Linden Meyer. Is that about right? Yeah. Yeah. I'll. I'll show you a plan in a moment but that's that's about right it's about half the size um and it's even smaller than the the new one that was just built by um i think lincoln properties one one um one building up so okay. it's much smaller in scale than than the um the existing structures that are that are there right yeah thanks go ahead yep a a absolutely so so again we've had a whole bunch of uh, conversations we really wanted to to understand what some of the hot buttons might be and what we could do to really make this as, as good of a project as uh, as we could um, so we're, we're happy about that. Um, we've incorporated everything into the plan and the, what we have before you is this plan essentially right here. Did, did that flip over when I clicked it? Yep. 
Great. Yeah, that's good. Perfect. So the, um, really this shows an aerial um, underneath and then the proposed plan rendered, rendered up on top. Again, Maple Street is to the bottom of the sheet, sheet here, Mechanic Street to the left, and that is the Lindermeyer building. So to your, your question, you can kind of see, I cut it off, but you can just see how much bigger uh, that is. It actually goes, it's much deeper, uh, deeper building. Um, it's an odd shaped lot. When, when you look at it, you've got this triangular piece that juts out in the back, which is a little bit odd. So it takes up a good portion of the, of the development of the property and really kind of forces us to build the, uh, the facility in this area um, here. Um, we place the building parallel to Maple Street. Look at the long end here, short end located uh, this way. One important component with the, the current layout is we've placed the loading um, aspect of the, of the facility here. And we think, and this really came from some of our earlier conversations, the initial plans, we had the building flipped and kind of pushed back into the site. And then we we're presenting this with, with Jim and staff. They just didn't like the fact that the trucks would be the prominent view from the, from the intersection, um, which is a great comment. We, we, we agree. Um, so we, we flipped the building and moved it. And that's really what one of the, the variances we're requesting for use because we shifted the building uh, to flip the, the, um, flip the docks to be on this side. So I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later, but that's a big part of what drove this current layout. And I think the benefit of having the trucks to the, to the rear. So having the loading there, as you can see, it's fully screened from the intersection. You'd be looking at the building and the landscaping. Uh, this area would be fully, fully screened. Um, so um, can I just ask a quick question, John? So your original concept had the building fully within the industrial. Yeah, we were, we were looking at flipping the building the other way, pushing it back a little bit. I mean, I think that this is definitely preferred. I'm just curious yeah. that the original it was fully within the industrial. That is correct. That is correct. And that's why I mentioned we really wanted to meet with staff early on. We find you just, frankly, you get a better product when you understand what's important to some folks and really what some of the hot buttons might be. And, and um, that came up pretty, pretty early on as a, as a comment. So, um, you know, luckily it was a change we we're able to make. And, and, and frankly, we agree with you. We think it's a much better plan this way. Um, beyond that, we have the, you know, essentially the employee parking here. Again, keeping with the same context, you know, it was brought up that it would be important to do what we can to really screen that as well, even though that's not the intensive portion of the use. Uh, we still, we provided the 45 foot green space located in this area. And it's kind of hard to tell from this plan, but those dashed lines represent an earthen berm. So we're essentially going to create a berm here and put some landscaping on top of this to really further buffer certainly the parking and then take away from the, um, from the, from the building as well. Additionally, we're placing the building approximately 70 feet back from, from the right-of-way line. Um, to put that in context, your setback line is 20 feet. So we could be, you know, by right, much, much closer. We didn't want to do that because this allows us a couple of things. You know, number one, it allows us this, this great landscape strip in here. So we're able to, to do more plantings and create more buffering. Set it back a little bit further from the intersection. It just takes, it just gives you a much better view from the, from the intersection. To, to put it in perspective, you can see this corner of the building up here. They're much closer. You know, really they were probably at that 20 foot setback. We wanted to be back much further. Um, also, when we had started having these conversations, it was brought to our attention, and, and, and I, I live in the area, so I'm very familiar with it, but it was brought to our attention that this really is a focal point. As you're, as you're coming into Bellingham from Franklin, you've got that newly reconstructed intersection. That's really where you, where you enter Bellingham. Uh, and it was brought up, it would be really good to have some sort of a, of a feature to um, really show that. Um, Jim had suggested that we have a, um, a, a wall structure. So this is a kind of a superimposed wall, but this is a stone wall with a welcome, welcome to Bellingham sign on it. It has some shrubbery to the front and some low-lying, you know, flowers and ground covering here with some, you know, specimen trees to the, to the rear. So we think adding something like that to the front of the site would be, would be, it's really a great way to come come into town. So essentially, this right here would be located 
right in here. That's what this represents. It's kind of hard to see at this scale, but you've got the lower lying grass in front of it, the wall behind it, and some of those, those specimen trees right there. So we think that's a, a really nice touch as you're coming in and really that's what you're, you're seeing at that, that corner of the, of the building. A um, couple other things that were important were the driveway locations and the circulation of the, of the site. Um, as Jim had mentioned, we, we have driveways and we have a couple of variances associated with a, with a driveway here, but we located the driveway as far away from the intersection as possible, um, both on Mechanic Street here and on Maple Street here. Uh, it's really engineering 101, right? You want to get as far away from the intersection as possible, which is, which is what we've done. And that provides, I think, a really good circulation pattern as well. Essentially, all of the uh, trucks would, would come in from, from Mechanic Street and enter the, the site at a counterclock, excuse me, at a clockwise orientation. And then from here, there was concern. Staff didn't want trucks coming, coming out this direction, right? It's kind of a tough move taking a left turn out into Mechanic, which is much busier than, um, uh, than Maple. So all trucks would be directed out onto Maple. However, from here, they would be restricted to a right out only. We would not allow any of the trucks to take a left out. I know there'd be concern. We don't want trucks going down Maple Street and heading in that direction. If they came out here, they would come onto Maple and they'd be able to take that left-hand turn heading into Franklin at the 140 um, interchange, 495 at 140, which really is the, is the closest spot to go to and it makes the most sense. It really pulls all of the traffic um, that would be associated with this away from, you know, Maple Street and towards the 140 intersection, which we think makes a lot of sense. So uh, as mentioned above, we've really reviewed this closely with staff. We've had a few meetings with a different members um, within, um, with, with, within the community and we've incorporated these, um, these changes. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it is a unique site, and, and really that's why we're, we're here tonight, seeking a few, a few variances to, to get into those a little bit more, and I've kind of touched upon those. You know, the first is, is the use variance. Again, this being the zone line and then the added benefit you get of the, of the 30 feet, we, you know, the use is allowed industrial, but it's not allowed in, in, in business. So we are requesting the variance for, for use, which allows us to, to propose what we think is the, um, is the better plan. When you look at that, you know, beyond just the confines of, of, of this parcel, I think it's very interesting as well. I have another graphic I'd like to, like to share. This is a blown up um, aerial exhibit, again in red, that is, that is our parcel, same orientation. Maple Street is here, uh, Mechanic Street is here. But what you'll see is everything on the north or the right side of Mechanic Street. It's all industrial. This is the new Lincoln uh, Properties site they put in. This is Linda Meyer, you know, another site here. It's all zoned industrial and built industrial. And as you continue into Franklin, which you can't see, that's the, the town line there. You've got Gorelick Farms and it continues with that use. It really is very odd that you had that small sliver of business land right, right here. So it's very consistent with the existing properties in the, in the, in the use. Uh, I, I had heard that once upon a time that was rezoned. So, so essentially um, you know, some of the cars could be um, sold there. I, I don't know if that's true or not, but regardless, it really doesn't make sense. It's really more consistent to be in that industrial use, which is prominent in that, that corridor there. Uh, second variance is for building height. Um, as, as Jim had, had mentioned, industrial uh, has one height, business has, has another. Um, so we would like the, the business height to, to, to hold. I think the, the proposed building would be right around that, that 40 foot mark as, um, as was mentioned, that's what's really needed for the clear height within the building of these industrial sites. Uh, to that end, you know, we've also thought about this just to make sure that wouldn't be a problem and would fit in. Again, it's very consistent with the heights of the buildings that are abutting us and the properties that are abutting us. Further, I think what we really wanted to do too, just to take away from the scale of the building, is as I mentioned, we've set it back further than, than we need to, which I think is, is nice. It brings down the scalability of the building. 
but it also allows us to build these berms up around the site, which further makes the building look a little bit smaller, right? It actually makes it look more what it would be in the, in, in the business zone. And then finally, as really as a side note, um, when we go to build this, we've kind of looked at the earthwork and how this would all fit in here. We'd likely be dropping this down about four to five feet below the intersection grade as well. So it would be sitting down just a little bit more as well. So again, we think that makes a lot of sense and is, is really kind of a, a formality associated with the, um, with the use. And then finally, the driveway location. Uh, as I mentioned in the presentation, our driveway is located in, in what we believe is the optimal location. You know, we have a traffic engineer as well who's, who's on board and, and has preliminarily looked at this. You typically want this to be as far away from the intersection as possible. It's closely aligned with this driveway here. By doing that, you're technically about 125 feet uh, center line of the existing driveway and center line of the proposed driveway. Uh, your regulations call for 250 feet. Again, that doesn't really make sense based on where this driveway is located. That would put the driveway right about here, which is much closer to the intersection and really would not work as well operationally. Uh, so we think that that variance uh, makes sense and is beneficial to the overall operations. With that, uh, that concludes our, our, our presentation. Uh, I believe that the, we've worked pretty closely with the, the town to this point and we're at the very, very first step of a, of a longer process. Uh, we think what we've requested makes, makes much sense and is justified. Um, we believe the project really fits in. We're excited about it. Uh, we think it would work very well. Um, with that, we look forward to working with the, with the town as we move forward. Um, Wayne is here and, and Paul is here as well. Um, we can answer any questions or go into any, any detail that I may have left out of the presentation. So thank okay. you for, for letting me present. All right, thanks, John. Um, I think <clears throat> I do have to say when I first heard about the project, I was definitely not thrilled to hear about a, a warehouse kind of going in over here on Maple Street because I feel like that whole Maple Street has had a lot of um, development and industrial development. Um, but I could see going through the process that this, it does make sense. I mean, it's definitely preferred to have the warehouse up front than to have a buy right and then have all the parking with the, you know, like the 18 wheelers and everything uh, facing the street. Um, I guess the few questions I would have would be, and I don't know, maybe Jim can answer this, but do we get in involved at all with traffic analysis? Cause that's my other big concern is like the rapid refill in this intersection. Do we right. weigh at all to, to have them do a traffic study and see what the impacts are gonna be? Right, so that, that really would fall into the planning board's uh, jurisdiction. I mean, basically what, what the board's looking at is more big picture in terms of how it relates to from industrial to business zone. Uh, so, you know, you could certainly, you know, request from the applicants very many reasonable um, actions such as, you know, some co uh, comparisons of similar uses in the business zone to industrial, uh, those types of things. I mean, uh, I'm sure John could speak to uh, the traffic patterns that a typical warehouse distribution center would would uh, interact with the intersection. I know most of you guys probably already know what the typical traffic pattern is for a warehouse in that area. Um, and then, you know, how it relates to a business zone uh, use, such as rapid refill and, and, and their, their traffic patterns. Um, but obviously, you know, without saying this, this use would have an impact to both Mechanic Street and Maple Street, so, you know, we could certainly highlight those issues, discuss those issues. If you think it's not more detrimental to the community um, and you're in favor of it, you know, these are things we could also highlight to the planning board when, uh, if it gets from here to there, um, you know, to have a, they, they mandate a, a, a traffic analysis through their uh, special permit process um, and, you know, would obviously be mitigating uh, all those factors. Okay. And the building height then, the industrial is allowed at 40 feet then. So they'd be seeking a variance for going five feet above what's allowed for business. Is that correct? That's correct. Yep. Okay. 
Yeah, then I think, um, I mean, I think to me with the variances, certainly they all make sense and it's beneficial to the town, in my opinion. But I guess the other question I would have for John would be, what with the building, is there any sense of what the, the elevations it's going to look like, what the exterior mater materials are going to be? Yeah, and, and I think Wayne, feel free to feel free to jump in. But this is something we want to make it a nice looking building. We've had preliminary conversations with contractor and architect to really come up with something that's going to going to look good. We do not have a final design at this point, but it isn't intended to be a you know a sheet of metal without any character. You know, there's going to be some glass along the along the front and some different articulation along the front as well, just to really make this look look well. Uh, and look nice. It, it is something I think that would be submitting uh, with the planning board application as well, just to make sure that that's reviewed and commented on and would be, you know, working with the town on that. But we don't have a final design of it at, at this point. It's all very preliminary. We do okay. realize, however, it's a prominent location and are, um, are planning accordingly. The other question I had was the, um, I guess in the back, I could see you have a, a, a fair amount of loading bays, but the, um, the employee parking seems like a lot of parking. Is that what's that that many employees are going to be working in the warehouse? Or is yeah, that so typically, um, typically you've got about one per thousand square feet is 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 the the, the rule of thumb for this type of a use, um, and, and that's what really what we have. We've we've got one per one per thousand, one hundred and twenty twenty four stalls. Okay, um, I guess I'll open it up to the board then for. Any questions they have? I have one question, Brian, if I may. Yeah. Um, on the uh, Mechanic Street coming east, is there going to be any mitigation for a left-hand turn lane for trucks coming in that way? That, that's a great question. That that actually came up in the um, in the staff discussions that that we had. I uh, can't recall if it was police or fire who brought that up. It was a very good question. So as you can see. Here, there's a left turn lane coming into, into Lindemeyer. Um, the roadway actually has the adequate width. And right here, you can't see from the aerial, it's kind of, kind of, kind of dull, but there's a striped lane in, in, in here. I envisioned that we would carry this left-hand turn lane into, into this site. Um, again, we, we need the, the final traffic study to come back, but that's the, the preliminary thoughts are we would be having a left turn lane coming into this site um, so that moves through. And again, I think that was brought up by, by police or fire uh, at our staff meeting and makes a lot of sense to us. So as a follow-up question, uh, uh, have you thought about possibly uh, ent the trucks entering from Maple Street, again, coming from one uh, Mechanic Street with a left-hand turn lane? So coming, coming in here and turning left into the site? Right. We felt as though it would be better this way with the with the one way circulation um, coming clockwise. You know, we can we can look further at that when we do the study. We just thought it would be preferable coming in this way. Um, th there's nothing that would preclude a truck from taking a left a left in here if that was more desirable. Um, but I think this we thought made made more sense left left in here and and right out this way. I agree that it would certainly be better that way coming from. Uh, heading west on uh, Mechanic Street to turn in that way. But uh, I'm not so sure that might be the best way when you're coming east on Mechanic Street. And I, I guess the traffic study would determine that. Yeah, and we we would work with whatever the the, the, the town wanted on that based on the results of the, of the traffic study. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, do you, you mind? Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, I, I overall, I, I really don't have a major issue um, with the variances to move this building this way. Uh, for what you try and do, I think it's a better resolution. Um, and I suppose a lot of my concerns are going to wind up at the planning board more than anything, but um, I definitely have a concern with a berm feature. Um, and you, you, we're going to have to look at traffic of this because. Um, the traffic that Amazon has created was way over what they had originally pitched to us. And this intersection, I'm not sure it can handle tractor trails coming back out on the Maple Street. Um, at any given morning, you're backed up past this entrance 
with the Amazon trucks. And that's probably three to four to five times a day. Um, so dumping more tractor trails out there, I'm not sure how that's going to work for us. And uh, that's, I, I have that, I definitely agree with that too, that I'm concerned with the traffic. But I guess at the same note, if they did buy right with the site, then it would still, they and, could. And, I don't, I do not disagree. I, I like this plan. Yeah. And it was originally pitched. Um, I actually did not know that they were going to send trucks back out this way. And the line of traffic on Maple Street already. Yeah. Uh, is quite intense. And these are big trucks. I mean, the Amazon, just those little ones. I mean, that you could see on even rapid refill and the intersection here. Yeah. There it's all the time. I, I mean, I mean, Again, being a, also being a resident here, there have been mornings where we'll sit in traffic, wait for the Amazon trucks that are lined all the way up the Mechanic Street, waiting to get into rapid refill. Yeah. And I think we're going to need something done with that section of Maple Street if we're going to dump. And again, I have no idea what the proposed truck traffic is. That would be done to the planning board, I guess. Um, but I think that has to be addressed. Ryan, if I could ask a question. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Jim, so when we say a buy right use, this would be a, a special permit, right? Right, yeah. due to the size of the building, you're correct. It would be a, a major business complex special permit. Uh, but yes, the industrial use is the buy right, I guess, is what he's referring to. So there would be no buy right positioning of the building on the lot, right? So that's that's not like a that's not a must be, right? That would always be subject to a special permit. Right at that at that size, yep. Okay. Is that because of the square footage, or could you explain that, Brian? Me? So <laughs> Jim Jim could do a much better job, but if you if you hit the magic size, um, it becomes a special permit, basically. Fifty thousand. So it's not. Sure. So it's not a buy right use that, or at least from the business district that they could, or the industrial district. So even um, if it's located in there, if it, once it goes over the 50,000, then it's a special permit. Yeah, and then it would be subject to planning where it's discretion about location and size of the building and things like that. Um, do we know, do we have any sense of who may occupy this warehouse? I don't so this is this is Wayne Finnegan. Uh, the the answer right now is no because you know, you don't find a user for the the buildings until you receive the permit and the building can be built. No one is going to spend time uh, working with us for a property until we have the permit. Are, is this building being designed with a particular tenant in mind? So we, th this is a classic warehouse use, which, you know, could be in, in, we have 40 tenants or 45 tenants in our portfolio today uh, from tenants that use as little as 10,000 or 8,000 square feet, all the way up to 200,000 square feet, depending on their need. And, you know, the, they, they range from Utz potato chips, if you know them from the, a local uh, supermarket to Federal Express. So the, the short answer is no. We, we know that the location is desirable for a warehouse where goods are stored and then delivered, you know, through, um, through um, uh, the distribution kind of mechanism. Uh, but we don't have a, a user in mind. It also could be a good use for a uh, modif slightly modified manufacturing type process, but we think it's better for distribution just on the location, warehousing and distribution. Would it be multiple tenants or could it be multiple tenants? Absolutely. Yeah, it could be multiple tenants um, in this location, probably not more than two or three. It wouldn't be nine or 10 users of this uh, in this location, but uh, could be one, two, or maybe three users. Okay. Do we have a copy of the original concept? Is that something was, we can? Yeah, I was curious to see that too. No, I don't believe that was submitted formally. 
Okay. Um, with regard to, I mean, traffic is going to be for sure one of the biggest sticking points for this project, particularly at this intersection. You, I don't think you could have put your finger down on anywhere else in town and pick a more complicated intersection to put a facility like this next to. Um, so my guess is, is that some sort of change will be needed to Maple Street to widen it, to uh, increase um, the width, to maybe put longer lanes and, and probably to make the left turn lane. I'm never good at directions, but if you're leaving the facility from the back down Maple Street, the trucks would take a left to get onto 495. That left-hand turn lane and all of the other lanes would, I would think, would have to be extended to accommodate the additional traffic. If that were to happen, does your, does you, you have the ability to move the building or would you have to move the building and are we losing anything in terms of screening if that should happen? No, so, so again, we, we, we haven't done the, the, the study yet, so we don't know what that, what that would, would result in. Uh, we were absolutely going to do that and we'll work very closely with the, with the planning board um, on that. Should the study show that an additional left-hand turn lane is needed on, on Maple Street um, here, uh, we do have um, plenty of room to, to accommodate that. You know, as, I, as I mentioned, there's 45 feet of, um, of green over here. If you needed to, to move that in you know, 12 feet or so, we would still have plenty of room to do a berm and the landscaping as proposed here. Um, so, so we have the room if something like that were, um, were needed. Um, another consideration is that this particular, like we've talked previously, this particular intersection is quite busy. Part of um, one of the reasons why that intersection is busy is the property across the street is um, a, a popular gas station and next to it is a, 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 another um, series of businesses that are also quite popular and there's no connection between uh, those properties and it's been sort of the go a goal of the town to connect them so that people don't have to leave um, the that property or the gas station say get back on the road onto Maple Street turn left onto Route 140 and then turn again into the um, shopping plaza that's right next door. And I understand that there is some common ownership between um, the applicant and the owner of the property across the street. So was one of the things that I think would be a reasonable request would be for um, some sort of connection or some consideration for a connection within that site, although it's off this particular parcel. But with that site would mitigate some of the traffic concerns that this, this proposal would put forth. Um, so, sorry to keep hogging all the time, Brian. So this, to me, the use variance is um, is the largest. Um, it's it's something that the zoning board really has to be very careful with. That where we where that we're given the discretion to just to uniquely change a parcel zoning. Um, and to me, that, that's a very, um, with that kind of authority, we have to be very sure of what we're doing and, and make sure that we have all the information to do that. I don't know um, from the description of the pro proposal and the narrative and, and the plan itself that that what was being asked for technically hits the the marks that we need to satisfy to to get to a zoning variance i the really the only thing that that the use to get to a use variance is really because any other way wouldn't be as good to the town so um so i struggle with that because i the, the only thing that makes this 
job that we have to do is to follow the rules and to follow, you know, because there's a lot of people we want to help and do things and make right for them. And we really do try, but sometimes you have to say no, and it's difficult. So um, I don't, I'm not comfortable necessarily um, coming to a conclusion tonight. And, uh, you know, we would, I do think that a traffic study and traffic analysis is I'm sure is underway and it's going to be part of the planning board process. So if we could get some sense of what the impacts might be where the proposed exits are, that would be good. If we could get an elevation of what the building might look like in terms of scale, um, that would be helpful to make a decision. Uh, I think seeing the previous plan option too, right? I'd like to kind of yeah. see the process of how it came to this. Right. And, and if there's other, I, I know that the, you know, that the size of the building is, um, there's a preferred size and then there's, um, maybe there's a more realistic size and, and things like that. So um, well, it would be good. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if, if I can introduce myself, I, could, I, I, I think I could at least respond to some of the things that Mr. Salisbury has raised. Sure. Um, good evening, everybody. My name's Paul Feldman. Um, I'm an attorney at Davis Marmadu Augustine in Boston, and um, I do an enormous amount of land use permitting, um, all different types of projects uh, over the last 38 years. And um, I think this is my first opportunity to be before the ZBA in Bellingham. Um, I appreciate that opportunity because I sort of keep a little checklist and out of the 351 cities and towns, I think I'm coming up to hundred and I think you're helping me get there. So um, nice, to, nice to be with you tonight. Um, let me, let me uh, just frame a couple of, of things for you guys to consider because all the points that I've heard are, are just excellent points. Um, but let me pick up on the last one that Mr. Salisbury said. I, I happen to agree, you know, that's a use variance is a very important uh, power that the zoning board has and it should be, you know, exercised, you know, after due consideration. And the one thing when I looked at this site that jumped out at me is that it, it almost felt like, not knowing the history, that the business zone was really almost like spot zoning on this lot. Um, this lot is surrounded industrial. You, you end up with this business zone that just particular to this lot. And um, I think that is something that, 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 you could, that, that is appropriate to consider that um, it's, it's not only, you know, it, it's one thing if, you know, all the property to the right and the left was, was business and, and, and the industrial was starting here, but it's sort of the opposite. We're right in the industrial zone with the entire parcel and, and this front piece was carved out and made into the business zone. And, and, and I, in, in some ways, I think that it makes it particularly unique um, and, and appropriate for the exercise of a use variance in this context. Even the property directly across the street before you hit the town line is industrial. Even that front frontage on Maple directly across the street is industrial zone. So I, I point that out as a as something to consider um, because I do think it does make the the uh, the variance analysis unique to this to this situation. Um, the the other thing I would point out is a little bit about our about the development process. So we have the property under agreement um, and and we have a due diligence period to sort of evaluate, can we develop the property in, in, in a way that, you know, we think makes sense and is a good, good plan and will be a good project for the community. And uh, when we did that, uh, we realized, you know, the threshold issue of the variances. And unless we uh, have the support of the ZBA with those variances, um, there's nothing else for us to do and, and we shouldn't invest a whole lot of money in design and you know all the details of, of, of engineering and and traffic reports which will amount to soft costs you know that will approach a hundred thousand and beyond um, without knowing if we can do this and and that's why we're here first to the ZBA um, 
And that's why we're here um, uh, so early in our process because our due diligence period is, is going to expire. Um, and uh, we, were, we, we, we rushed to try to get onto your agenda tonight so we can get your feedback. Um, certainly, you know, the, the, all, all that I'm hearing uh, with regard to traffic circulation and the like is a classic, you know, planning board site, site plan review type issues. Um, all good points that, that you guys have made, I'm sure we're gonna hear again. And, and I completely appreciate there may be when our traffic consultant does the analysis, a need to widen Maple Street. And as John pointed out, there's certainly the land uh, area to do that without affecting the design. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I, I guess I'm encouraging the zoning board, if you can see your way clear, to um, give us some, give us the feedback that we need to, to, to advance the project. Um, I'm not trying to cram you guys at all, um, but it, it uh, um, I'm not sure what else we can present about the building itself and the site use itself that um, would, would help you make that judgment about a variance. It's for you guys to make and if you make it, we'll proceed. And if you don't give it to us, then we're going to end up terminating this purchase and sale agreement. Um, and and, and I, 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 I will tell you that when, when you have to evaluate this type of thing, the size of the building is a key parameter because there are certain metrics that make a warehouse distribution facility work. You know, certain width and, and, and um, and a length, a certain number of loading docks. And so uh, if you really want to build something that doesn't turn out to be a white elephant, but will really function correctly um, and, and, and get the right quality tenants, um, that's what the metrics are that you're seeing on this plan. Um, and we wanted to show you that. That's exactly what we wanted to show you. We wanted to, to show you, look, this is the concept and this is this is why it works and we think it, it, it could be executed in a, in a really um, uh, beneficial way for everyone. So I, I don't know if that helped, helped Mr. Salisbury with some of the decisions or, or, um, or some of the other members, but uh, um, you know, uh, if you could see your way clear of deliberating and, and, and uh, um, you know, um, coming to a conclusion, we would appreciate that but I, I, certainly would, I certainly wouldn't say no to other information requests you guys have. I'm not, I'm, I'm certainly not doing that. We're, we're here asking you guys for relief. We, we need your support. I'm not, I'm not gonna, you know, um, poke you in the eye when I'm asking you for your support. Um, I, but I just wanted you to appreciate the entire process that we're in and, and, and how much this costs and, and, and sort of the steps we take in order to advance the ball. Yeah, no, we and we definitely appreciate that. And it sounds like you've been working with the town, which we appreciate. Um, I think all that Brian is saying is that he's just saying he wants to get all, you know, more information and that it's a big decision to make. And I think for me personally, too, I would kind of like to see what the original kind of option was to see kind of how the process evolved. Um, another thing I would kind of note is that I see how, as far as with the, the zoning uses, I would kind of argue that if you go along Maple, and I think part of the concern is that all the effects that have happened to Maple Street is that if you look at the zoning map all down, if you're looking, because you guys for industrial, were looking north-south on this kind of map. If you look kind of east-west, you could see there's a predominance of uh, business zoning that does kind of have a continuation over into this property. Mr. Chairman, if you may, if I may. Yep. Um, one of the things on a variance, and I, I pulled it up, is substantial detriment to public good. Um, if we read the applicant's cover letter, the second to last page, it says, allows employee traffic to utilize Maple Street while truck traffic to access on Mechanic Street, and he leaves it. So there's no say in that in his proposal, the trucks are gonna leave onto Maple, onto, uh, Maple Street. Um, 
So I'm really concerned about the truck traffic there. And beyond just access in there, we're saying you can only take a right-hand turn. We have two other warehouses on Maple Street that say the same thing and it doesn't happen. Yeah, I mean, I guess I don't know how the monitoring uh, for that happens. Mind. We went to great lengths with the Amazon buildings to put curbing up there and the trucks just drive right over it. Oh, really? So yeah. I, I, I do have quite an issue with trucks entering around the Maple and adding more traffic there. No, I, I totally agree with that. I get, the one question I have too for maybe back to, to Brian would be, now I'm kind of going over this hurdle of the special permit because you're saying the building they're proposing is 100,000 square feet. They could do 50,000, but if they go above the 50, they need a special permit. If you look under the special permit criteria, it lists about not having any traffic flow, you know, having detrimental impact of traffic flow, uh, community needs, neighborhood character and social structures. Um, I guess I'd be interested to get kind of Brian's take on that. Uh, be before you go there, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman, isn't that um, special permit for the planning board, though? Oh, that we, would be planning. Okay. Yeah, I think we're here just for the, the three variances they're asking for. But again, to qualify for the variance, um, neighborhood characteristics definitely fall into our agenda here. Okay. Unless I'm mistaken, please correct me if I'm wrong. No, that's why I was curious too, because on the application, it doesn't list the special permit, but maybe is that, is that correct? This thing, that, that is a planning board special permit. I think that's right. And, and when we, again, and, and you're sort of like, you're our, you're our first go card. If we don't, it, it doesn't make any sense for us to talk to the planning board if, if, um, if you guys don't want to give us the variances. So that's why you don't see uh, everything, but we're gonna to have to go through that entire permitting process with the planning board, both from a special permit point of view and a site plan point of view and meet all those criteria in front of that board. Um, but as a threshold, we, 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 we need to get past you guys first. And okay. Mr. Feldman, I, I, fully, I fully understand that and appreciate that, but as a zoning board, we have our criteria as well. Absolutely. And, and I wouldn't by any means say we don't want to give you the permit. I don't think any one of us have said that. Right. Um, for what could go on this property, I think it's not a terrible use, although I'm not sure we really need another warehouse, but it could be a, a good look use, it could look well. Um, but again, it has to be our criteria as well. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. And I, again, I don't misunderstand me. I, if it's the pleasure of the board to get more information, uh, I'm, I'm never going to say no to that. I mean, that's, that's, that's you guys doing your job. I'm not, you're not going to get any pushback from me on that. And Jim, um, just to clarify then the special permit. So we are just tasked with the variances, with the three variances listed. Right. So yeah, just to review real quick. So we, we, yeah, you have three variances in front of you. Uh, and so these three variances help guide that design of the project. Um, essentially, if the, the variances aren't granted, well, despite the, the, you know, the applicant saying maybe they wouldn't proceed with it, uh, you know, otherwise it would be, you know, a driveway towards the center of the project, a smaller building maybe in the industrial side, uh, only the bus of trucks facing this way. So there's some detriments, I think, um, to uh, doing it as, as in, in conformance with the bylaws. So that's why they're before you with the three variances. As Brian mentioned, though, there are uh, at least one special permit that would be before the planning board. And so the planning board is then tasked with, okay, we have a project in hand, which is this warehouse perhaps. And it also comes with basically three decisions from the zoning board that says um, these three uh, bylaws, we've granted them some relief to try and improve that project. So here, here is those decisions. Now planning board, it's your turn to start looking at all those special permit criteria and determine whether or not they meet those criteria. So yeah, this is, this is truly step one. If, um, you know, if it doesn't uh, move past step one, you know, there are, there would be different alternatives for the applicant or the, the property owner. Um, 
And so then it, either way, it would go to the planning board next. That tonight with your decision, nothing gets built. Um, it's just simply relief of a bylaw for them to continue on with the development process. All right, thanks, John. Yeah, I definitely agree with Brian that I would like to see um, some building elevations and I, I would kind of like to see the first option, even if it is just more, it doesn't have to be fully rendered like this, but I kind of like to see where it started and how it developed to this point. But, um, and then I don't know, Brian, if you want to reiterate back on some of the other points that you were saying that you'd like to get more clarification. I, I think, you know, and I appreciate the applicant, they're, they're going out of their way and working with Jim and, and the staff and if, have really been thoughtful and their presentation has been thoughtful and um, and I appreciate all that. If we could just get a little bit more information about what this is conceptually might look like if you're standing at the intersection with what 40 feet versus 45 feet. And I know that the, there's at least tentative plan to grade it down five feet to make it look somewhat smaller. If we could get a sense of what that might look like, um, that would be helpful. And, um, so are you, you're thinking more like um, almost perspectives kind of looking down like Maple Street or seeing back from Mechanic Street? Yeah, just a rough idea to get some sort of scale that just, yeah. you know, because I don't have a very good imagination. So if I could visualize it, that would be helpful. And Brian, are you also, Brian, are you also uh, asking for what the building itself might look like? No, not, I mean, not really. Just some idea of what the scale might look like. I think that I, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves and, and all of that would play out in the planning board. Okay. Just, just on the issue of, because I don't, you know, you know, what's the difference between 40 and 45 feet? Is it going to look out of scale with the rest of the buildings? That's, you know, it's, it's that one I'm struggling with, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, 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 I get, I get the business. Thing. We, we, there, there are renderings that we could do to help, to help yeah. with that. I mean, there just are. And, um, and uh, in terms of, you know, and we could talk to the contractor and try to present something that while well, we can't say to you it's exactly what it's going to look like, we're not going to, you know, present something that we really is different than what we intend to do. I mean, we're going to try to make a fair representation of, of, of what it is that we're thinking about so that, you know, you guys are really making a judgment on what we're, what we're showing you. Yeah. Sure. And also, um, as obviously we're going to be back with this again, but, and I know this is a big alphabet here, but 24012B3A, that's the actual bylaw here. Um, I really need that looked at and how it's going to be detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, and that's purely on truck traffic. Um, and, and, you know, and Paul, by, by all means, I'd invite you to at 10 o'clock any morning of the week, you know, park out there and, and see what it's like. Uh, I, I, it's, it's not a good situation. I understand and, and, and give us an opportunity to, you know, we, we did already uh, bring on board um, a traffic consultant, um, uh, Jeff Dirk from Vanessa Associates. He's one of the best guys in the state and, and we'll, we'll take the feedback that we hear from you, Peter, and from the other members of the board and we'll go back to him and, uh, and um, uh, articulate exactly the concerns and let's see what he has to say. Can I, can I ask a question? I mean, because your driveway is, what did you say, 125 feet center line to center line? Correct. Um, to the other, yeah, right there? Yep. Um, they swing tractor trailers out of that all day long too. Not that it's a great thing crossing there, but you're only 100 feet, 125 feet from another intersection doing the exact same thing. Um, I at first, when I first heard about this, I said, oh my God, you can't take tractor trailers out of there. But then I sat there and I saw what was happening with Linda Meyer and I'm like, okay, well, that's not terrible. So that may be consideration is just to swing them right back out the same way they came in. Well, we'll, well, we actually asked Jeff Dirk about that 125 foot separation to make sure we weren't, you know, creating a, a traffic engineering issue and, and yeah. he he said we weren't but we'll, we'll 
that's the whole point. We're going to talk to him about the entire traffic scenario. Yeah, I mean, because so one of your variants is that driveway being so close, and I'd be more comfortable with it being that close if the traffic was going back out that way, too. I, I would not have an issue with that um, at all. If I may, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Ray. Yeah, thank you, John and Paul. I really appreciate you coming, being proactive uh, and coming with a nice early conceptual plans. But I do agree with Peter in terms of the traffic. I always take uh, Mechanic Street going west and the traffic already is really bad uh, right afternoon. And then also in the morning uh, going down east. And also I, I always get stuck past the rapid refill. So I can't just imagining you know, trucks going in and even going out through Mechanic Street. I don't think that's even viable. And I agree about Maple Street being a bit a bit narrow and expanding it would definitely help. Um, regarding the variance for the 125 foot require, you know, require, we require 250 feet. And in this case, it's 125 feet. I feel like it's difficult for me to make a decision without the traffic study as uh, Peter expressed. Uh, you know, sorry for pushing you to do a bit more work without being, without giving you a solid answer, but I feel like it's really difficult for the zoning board to make a decision without that inf information presented. Um, and uh, as Brian, uh, Mr. Salisbury had expressed, it would be good to at least get just kind of like ele elevation wise, what it would look be like compared to uh, street level. Um, and, uh, you know, we really want to work with you, but it, we, we need to see the community needs being met to really be comfortable um, given the variance in this case. Full, absolutely, fully appreciate, fully appreciate all the feedback. And Jim, I, I don't, um, I, I would certainly hope you don't walk away from the meeting thinking that, you know, it's a shutdown, we're totally against it. I mean, it, it's like with any other project that we have to face, especially of this nature, structure, um, a stature. Um, we have concerns and I, I, hopefully we can work through them. Okay. Do we, um, want to make a motion for a continuance then to the next meeting? I will, uh, move to, uh, continue till, uh, the June meeting. Second June, the motion. June 3rd. June 3rd. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed. All right. Yeah, I want to thank um, thank you guys, John, Paul. Um, we definitely appreciate that you're working with the town and you know listening to everyone and trying to make a good effort to balance your needs with uh, the community and with the town. So um, we look forward to seeing you in June. So uh, Brian, I, I guess uh, I guess the question is to ask these guys if that gives them enough time to get the information that we're requesting. Yeah, I think that's a good, good point. point. If it, I, I'd like to, first of all, I want to express our appreciation back to you guys. Um, you know, there's volunteer boards, you, you dedicate your time and you're doing something important and it's, 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 it's legally required for us and we need people like you and we, we appreciate that. I, I'd like to keep us on the June 3rd meeting so that we um, uh, see if we can get it done. If it turns out we can't come back to you with you know, with the responsive information that we now know you need by June 3rd, we'll ask for a continuance. We won't take up your time. We'll ask for that meeting to be continued and, 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 and we'll just roll it. But, you know, give, give us a chance to, um, to do what we need to do in the next three weeks and be able to get stuff into you guys, you know, a few days before your meeting, so you have a chance to digest it. And if we can't hit that, we'll let you guys know, and we'll 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 ask for it to be bumped another month. Okay. Yeah, I I apologize. Good point, Art. I guess I should check with you guys to make sure you can actually make that. But um, and and Mr. Mr. Chairman, this is this is Wayne Finnegan. I'm the developer, as I mentioned earlier. So uh, we're really looking at two two things, which are design elevation street level kind of trying to get conceptual feel of what the building is and then traffic in and around the building those are the two things i heard mentioned um the, there was a third thing mentioned about our neighboring properties which of course we we don't have any control over 
uh, those properties. So I, I don't know that that that's something that's, I don't know the degree of importance of that versus focusing more specifically on what's happening on our property and around our property. Yeah, and I, I think for the, the views, the perspective was just to get kind of a sense of scale. Yeah. So you don't have to worry too much about the building materials and all that. Okay. Just kind of views down mechanic and maybe. Yeah. Okay, so I, I, I think we, with that we can, Paul, we can deliver the views. So it's more, it's more the traffic, I think. Right. right. We have to do. Let's talk. Let's talk to Jeff. I mean, we're not going to be. We're not going to. We're not going to. We don't intend or plan to conduct a traffic study, but we can. We can. The traffic consultant can provide a lot of information about the traffic generation of a facility like this, how it works, how it would work. You know. Uh, we, the, there's a, there's a, this is not, we're not doing something unique here. There's a lot of data out there that the traffic consultant can bring. You know, and, Mr. And, Feldman, with that said, the unique um, situation with this intersection um, that has to be not just general traffic studies, but what is already existing at this intersection is very important. To work in right, but uh, so so then this that's an important question, Peter. If you're it, it, so, if it, it, is the board asking us to to do a full traffic study, meaning do all the peak hour counts, do all the um, uh, you know daily daily traffic counts, and actually get data? If that's the case, then I know we're not going to be able to produce a, a traffic study in a month. Uh, that I that I know for sure. Or uh, what I what I thought um, was that. We would ask Jeff to um, uh, do, do an analysis of our proposed use and he'll go out to the intersection. He'll be able to address a lot of issues and we would ask him to come frankly to the meeting so you could ask him directly. Observations. I mean, gotcha. we, would, we, would, we would, I would ask Jeff to present to you guys, um, you know, how, how he thinks that the traffic would work in, 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 in relation to the other properties and he, he wouldn't be able to do that without actually going out to the intersection and observing it. But I'm talking about, you know, the counts and, and all that stuff that, that, that takes weeks to do. I, I think I, and I boy can speak for themselves um, personally. I think that's, you're going to need to address that with the planning board. Um, but I think for your own good, someone have boots to the ground and see what goes on there and have your traffic consultant say, you know, we're sending 50 trucks, to this intersection and it's going to be a debacle or you know they could come out that other intersection that could work better just to just to kind of put a bow on this one i've already talked to their traffic engineer and he's already been out on site and okay. have, have, has done counts actually to my understanding uh you That's know true. given uh given the covid situation obviously the trip uh, the trips are down some so i did ask him to look back um at his some historical data but i did mention that you know COVID did not stop Amazon, so the Amazon numbers are probably fairly accurate, uh, but the balance of the, the intersection, they should be looking a little bit historical as well. And just speaking for myself, I know I would find it useful. I know that the that traffic engineers will say, okay, this is a warehouse, this is this facility, this is of this size, so many, so there's, you know, they look up on their tables and say, okay, it's going to be this many trips, roughly, and based on the distribution of where people might turn, you know, a hundred trucks come out Maple Street, a hundred trucks will go Mechanic Street and go left and go right. Something of that sort of, you know, not the in the weeds details, but something like that, you know, this kind of facility, facility generally generates this much I, trips. That would be helpful. Yes, that's, that's something that, uh, that, that, that I was expecting that yeah. we would be able to present because that kind of trip generation and distribution, which that's what you were referring to, Brian, is, yep. is not only the number of vehicle trips, but how they distribute. That's something that Jeff Durr can work up. And and I didn't realize, uh, Jim, that he already had done some counts. I didn't know, Wayne, that uh, that that Jeff, that Dirk had already done that. It, it, I, I appreciate that. And then just to put a, a, another point on it, what we've done typically when um, the Victory building down Maple Street went in and then the Campanelli buildings went in without any um, 
known tenant or use, we've asked the traffic engineers on those projects to assume the worst case scenario, which happens to be an Amazon. And lo and behold, it was an Amazon. <laughs> so if you could, I know that'll be asked at the planning board. And if your analysis could assume sort of not the middle, but the worst case scenario, that would, that would be very helpful. So there are categories of warehouse distribution, and I understand what you're saying. Pick the category that is the heaviest traffic generation category. Yeah, because that, that's going to be where the planning board starts anyway. So Yeah, I understand. I appreciate okay. that. And then one, just one other thing. Yeah, do you mind providing just to show the original scheme for the warehouse? I'd just be curious to see what it looked like originally, where it was flipped yeah. over. So I, I actually have never seen it, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave that up to John. I mean, just, just for me personally, it'd be a good perspective to kind of see where the, how it came to this, which makes sense, but to see what it originally looked like would be helpful. Yep, we can certainly do that. Okay. Any other comments from the board? I'm good. I think, Dan, I think we had a first and a second. I don't know if we had an actual vote, if we could just all in favor. Type all right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Great. Thank, thank, thank you. you thank you. Good luck, guys. Okay. Let me see. All right. The next item on the agenda is a continuation for a special permit for 109 Pat uh, Patricia Drive for an animal kennel. Uh, the applicant is Jose Montenegro. Um, is he available? I'm here. Jose here. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. Um, so Jim, where did we leave off on this one? I'm just trying to recall. Yep, so uh, where we left off is the, the board had requested a draft decision to kind of evaluate the, um, how the conditions would shape out and if it was uh, effective enough. Um, so in your package tonight, you have that draft decision for consideration. Um, tonight, though, if you do have any other questions, comments for the applicant or any questions uh, from the public, you could take those. Um, if not, and you've exhausted your review, I would just recommend closing the hearing before you start uh, analyzing that decision. Okay. Um, hmm. I have a question if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Jose. And it's been 30 days now. What activities um, have you done to try to find new homes for a couple of these dogs? The uh, I'm still trying to reach out to friends to see if they are looking to get um, to take any of the pups, but um, they're still thinking about it and they don't want to commit to anything just yet, as um, you guys haven't given me an answer. Okay. Um, I have also, um, I did not send a picture, but I can show you on my phone. I've already started changing some of the fences um, around the property. Yeah, that uh, I was going to ask. Yeah, because Jason, I think, asked about that too. Yes. Yeah. So we have already made progress on those. Uh, we already have all the fences that we need to change around the property. We're just going weekend by weekend, changing some as as we can. You need a motion to close the hearing, Brian? Um, unless, is there any more discussion from any of the board members? Uh, Jose, has anything uh, else changed other than? Um, yep, I, I believe one of the concerns um, from one of the neighbors was if I was going to get more um, pups. Um, the last female had finally been spaded as well. I can show you here. Um, she got spaded actually yesterday since we had a little issue with our pet. Uh, closing down for our appointment week. So um, that is also been finalized. So no more extra animals in the house or property. How many animals do you have right now in the house? So it's still six, um, okay. still the six Siberian, uh, Siberian houses. Have, have you heard anything from uh, neighboring, from neighbors? Nope, no, no one's complained, nothing about them. Okay. Um, just every time we walk in, they're always uh, so happy to see them. That's great to hear. How, how have the dogs been uh, with, you know, traffic, foot traffic around the, the house? They're always, they're the same. Uh, they are curious, but they don't like it. I mentioned in the previous meeting, they don't bark. Okay. They are not the, the dogs that kind of bark. 
Thank you, Jose. Okay. Should we, um, any other comments from the board? All right, Art, do you want to make a motion to close? Unless you wanted to open up to the public. I don't know if you've done that or not. No, that's a good point. Um, yeah, I'll open up to the public. Any other, any neighbors or butters that want to speak, just uh, state your name and address. Do you know if there's anyone on the public that you can see, Jim? No, it doesn't look like anybody. And motion, to motion to close the hearing then. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. So do we want to just go over the um, draft decision or do we want to have just general discussion amongst the board or what do we think is well, I, helpful? I'm hoping that all the board read the draft decision and I just had one comment on it if, unless uh, you want Jim to go through the draft. I've read it. Okay, so the one comment I had is uh, Jim, so um, something that something to say that uh, as one dog leaves, they won't be replaced until we're down to the four. I didn't see anything in there for the draft decision. Yep, um, I believe it's here. One second, think, let me just. Let me... Yeah, I think it's number 10 where it says uh, annual review of this permit shall be required at a regularly scheduled zoning board of appeals meeting until such yeah. time as the applicant achieves the animal kennel limit for dogs. Yeah, no, it doesn't say anything about not reason. adding another does, animal that does or not replacing. Cover. So if they happen to get a home for one dog, um, this statement allows them to get another one. Yeah, and that's what, I, that's what yep. we don't want, correct? Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah that should have that should have said and uh, until the limit of four dogs, and then, yeah, it, it, and then that is the limit. I, I thought I did have it in there, but didn't, nevertheless, I'll add it. No problem. Okay. Actually, you, Jim, you do have it in there that four is the limit, but there's no verbiage in there. Um, saying that, you know, if one finds a new home that they can't bring another dog in. Right. Right, okay, so six is the maximum, and as, e as each dog leaves, that's the new maximum, basically. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll wordsmith that, but yeah, I got it. Thank you. Thanks. Good point. Good call, Art. Yeah, I don't think I had anything. Any other changes? Yeah. I that was the only thing I was going to add as well. I think it looks great. Yeah, I feel comfortable with the you know board of health inspections and um, the annual reviews. Okay. We need a motion, Brian. Sure. Unless anyone uh, wants discussion, but I guess we could just do a motion. Oh, well, we can have discussion after the motion as well. So. Okay. A uh, motion to uh, grant the request for uh, the permit as requested uh, with the changes as we uh, noted. Second. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Is there any opposed? Not to that motion. Okay. <laughs> And I just, I'll be very upfront with the board and, and the petitioner. Um, I am not comfortable with six dogs on that property. That's such a small property, especially six large dogs. Um, it's just my personal, I just don't see it. I don't see it as being viable. I don't see it as being good for the, the pets. I just don't see it. <clears throat> Ordinarily, Peter, I would agree with you, absolutely. But um, since there has been no objections by any of the neighbors, and you know what we're what we're really looking is to make sure that uh, all of all of the uh, all of the public is is uh, satisfied. And judging by uh, all of the responses from all of the neighbors um, and the questions that was asked by the board as well, it seems as though it, it would work. Yeah, I agree with Art. I mean, I would kind of, I kind of rely on what the neighbor neighbor feedback is. But do, I did. Do we have any verbiage about um, kind of an inspection after a month or three months? Was it? I think there was right for. There's verbiage in there about inspection. I think it's annual though. 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is would it be good to kind of have one earlier, at least maybe one or perhaps three yeah. months right after they move in? And Wasn't then, there a discussion about if there's so many complaints, then there's... Two, yes. If there's uh, two complaints or more from the neighbors. Yeah, Yeah. so that's number nine, I believe, um, for complaints or during inspections, if there's violations, I believe that's what it... Uh, yeah, complaints. If multiple complaints are made either the, to either any of the town employees, the animal control officer, building inspector, town planner, et cetera, within a calendar year, the applicant shall be required to come before the Zoning Board of Appeals at a regularly scheduled meeting to discuss yeah. measures the applicant is taking to remedy the concerns. Failure to comply with the corrective measures agreed to shall be deemed a violation of the special permit and shall provide the Zoning Board of Appeals with grounds to avoid the permit. I'm, I'm kind we'll of saying that. Oh, go ahead, Brian. Um, I was kind of saying that to see if Peter would feel more comfortable. I agree with Peter. Six is a lot, but perhaps having an inspection happen, not, you know, let's say the neighbors can't see what's happening in there. You know, thank you, Jose, for you know, replacing the uh, fence. You know, and, 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 and I appreciate that. I, um, my, my feeling and my opinion comes from um, the welfare of the dogs. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I know the, the neighbors are okay with it. Um, right. I, I love dogs. I've had dogs all my life and um, these dogs need to be out. They need to run. They need space and have a six confined to that area. That that's where my feelings come from. So it's it's really not the the zoning bylaw that's right pushing me in that direction. It's just my personal feeling about the dogs. That's all. So we, with animal control visiting at an earlier, not an annual um, period, uh, that that's kind of where I'm going at. Perhaps adding something in there as a requirement. I think that would help. I think we already voted on it, though. Technically speaking, oh, we did too. <laughs> but you voted on what, Brian? I think, well, I think we we adopted the proposed order. Right. Yeah, I was a little confused where we're going with that. Yeah, there, there was a vote for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah for the, was, I think Peter was the only one that didn't get it. <laughs> that's okay. That, so I got it as amended, though. And if if you want me to add the you know a uh, three month uh, review by the animal control officer, I know. She's been in touch with Jose before. I don't think that would be an issue. I'd feel more comfortable. Sorry for doing it later. Good. Okay, no problem. Should we, uh, just to make it formal, Jim, or does it matter? Yeah, that, might as well. Well, I, actually, before you make it formal, yes, we did vote on it. I think I'm the only one that made it last time. Yeah, four, I got 4-1. Yeah, okay. Uh, so motion we, to add the amendment as uh, as Ryan suggested. Second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Thank you, Jose. So, Jose, um, the board has granted you uh, this permit. I'll be finishing up uh, the permit tomorrow. We'll get a sign stamped in with the town clerk. Um, you then have 20 day appeal period. So if any of the neighbors do have concerns, they technically are allowed to appeal this, this decision. But once that 20 days expires and if no appeals happen, then uh, he'll reach out to you with uh, your approval as well as uh, Amy from my office will be providing you with a letter of approval and outlining all these conditions. Um, you do need to record that at the Registry of Deeds uh, to make it uh, effective. All right, thank you very much guys. All right. Thanks. Thank so you. Good luck. Take care. Good luck. Trying. Okay. The next item on the agenda is a special permit, continuation of a special permit for earth removal between Mechanic Street and Charles River. Applicant is a Snowflake LLC, uh, care of Kevin Lobosier. 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 Thanks, Brian. <laughs> All right, Jim, what's the um, update? Yep. Yeah, so uh, very similar to the last one, minus the dogs. Um, so this is, uh, you know, we've, we've vetted the earth removal process for Red Mill um, uh, subdivision. And uh, at the last meeting, the board requested a draft decision for consideration. Um, also from the last meeting, um, you know, the, the board did request our peer review engineer take a 
a, re a look at um, the plan uh, for the earth removal. The, the peer review engineer is well uh, versed in this project uh, from the planning board side of things. Uh, so he was able to uh, provide some assistance there. And so you see in the, in the draft conditions, there are uh, many things that stem from uh, my coordination with the peer review engineer. So again, if, um, if the board doesn't have any other questions or if there's any comment from the public, uh, once you exhaust that review, if you could just please uh, cl formally close the hearing and then we could review any draft conditions. Okay, thanks, Jim. All right, is there any, um, any discussion from the board members? I'm here. Okay, is there any comment from the public? Are there any um, neighbors or abutters or anyone that uh, would like to speak? Doesn't look like it, Brian. Okay, do we want to make a motion? Can I, can I ask a question? Sure. Jim, um, do I, and, uh, I didn't see it, but maybe it's in there, but do we want to add anything about, um, is it Mill Street? What's the name of that street? Mill. Um, Mill. About, kind of, yeah. About exiting and, and which direction to exit. So if it's in there, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so it's not it's not specified in the decision. However, it references the plan and the, the earth removal plan states a right turn only off of Mill Street uh, okay. until until such time as the other uh, entrance you know is is completed. Uh, so the other being all the way down on Mechanic Street, you know, blasting through all that ledge and fun stuff. Uh, but yeah, that the plan executes phase one being right turn only out of Mill Street. And uh, and then at some point they'll stop using Mill Street. Exactly right. Okay. And, 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 and if I make it- Good question. I'm, I'm go sorry. Ahead. Um, oh, go ahead, babe. The trucks returning while we're starting this project, um, would they be coming on directionally challenged right now, but up 126 and taking a left into Mill Street? Coming from like the Dairy Queen area? Was, how is that Mark, gonna work? In Mark, situation? that's all you. Yeah, I, I don't believe that they'll be coming, or many will be coming from uh, from the north, if you will, coming yeah, south yeah. on 126, taking a left onto Mill Street. Okay. Uh, again, it'll be dependent upon um, who is providing the vehicles, um, whether it be you know Pine, whether it be Kimball, whether it be uh, other folks. But uh, I think when we when we remove the earth, it goes to different spots uh, uh, in the area. When they come back, they're, they'll basically become backtracking their exact same route. Well, exactly. And if they're taking a right and go ahead and north, would they be coming back from the north as well? Most likely. Yeah. So I, I mean, I'm sure they can make those turns. It's just a that's a busy intersection. We take the left across with a big truck. So, Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, but we, the planning board. Um, is not allowing the left turns, right, from 126? Right, left turn oh. in from 126. You could take a right turn in from, on Mill Street from 126 and a right turn out. So it's right in, right out, that's right. Uh, so there, there's gonna be a no left something right there. In. Right, there'll be a sign there. There's actually, and, and uh, the, prod, uh, the applicant is improving that, that intersection as well slightly. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. so I, it wouldn't ahead, be that Brian. bad. I, I don't think it would be uh, terribly imposing to say no left-hand turns from 126 mm. into Mill Street. So basically no left-hand turns on the trucks while they're doing this. Well, they would have to- Either in or out. Either in or out, no left-hand turns. Well, they can't, I, I, they just can't make those left-hand turns at that intersection. It's just- Well, they can. I, but... Well, they can, but it's crazy, right? Well, I guess, Jim, is there any reason to not have that as part of one of the conditions in this? Because I know you're saying it's kind of tangentially referencing the plan. Yep. Yeah, we could certainly make a specification that no left, during earth removal, no left hand turn from 126 to Mill Street, as well as no left hand turn from Mill Street to 126. I don't, I don't think that's uh, unreasonable. 
Is that um, agreeable to the applicant? I guess I, I, I totally understand the leaving Mill Street and turning left. That's the, the most difficult uh, turning movement. I don't understand, and I, I've lived in the area for 50 years, I don't understand why coming down 126, you can't, before you come to the light, take a left onto Mill Street. So that's a, that's a challenging intersection. I mean, we, what, uh, I mean, if you wanted some, you know, maybe some leeway there, I mean, we could certainly maybe if the board's amenable for that left onto Mill Street, you know, maybe if, if you know there is a contractor that's gonna be coming from the North, we could schedule a detail for that. Um, I mean, at the cost on, on, on the applicant, obviously, but- okay. uh, At the time, can we do a time period? Would that also well, be? I mean, this, this is going to be a long run project. And th those, I mean, that during the day, during north. rush hours. You know, if, if you, you've got trucks, you know, trying to cut across, that's going to back that all the way up past Walgreens and beyond. So the, I agree, there's a lot of traffic there. The only right turns. I know the truck's going to drive further, but that's just the easiest way. Would it be an option to limit no left turns between rush hours at rush hours only? The, the, this, the permit currently says between nine and four okay. um, that they would be operating. It's just, it's a really kind of a dangerous maneuver, even in a Honda Civic to take a left at, depending on the time of the day into mill street, you know? So if you're, if you have a heavy truck that doesn't accelerate very fast and you're desperate to get over, you know, uh, I would be concerned about that. I mean, listen, in all honesty, I, um, Sunday afternoon, Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon, I feel sure afternoon it was, um, we drove down there, we went to Dairy Queen for a quick bite, and um, that was tough getting in and out of there, because I, I came from the north and I exited back out, and um, that was in my personal vehicle, it wasn't easy to get in and out. And that was, was, it, was it, it more difficult getting out or coming in? I, I've never had a difficulty coming in. I, I had trouble. I, I came out of the, the parking lot and I went to take a left and go in there and the cars were coming the other way. I had to hold up traffic. To get in. I drive it almost uh, daily and yeah, there's always a lot of people will stop and slow down going towards, you know, Honeydew and uh, Dairy yeah. there. there. There usually is, I'll always like break right before mm -hmm. um, the Dairy Queen there going. I, I only think it would benefit you. I just, just that's all Mark. And yeah, no, I, I, I completely uh, appreciate the input. Uh, as I said, like a lifelong resident, uh, uh, I don't have any opposition. I think I think because this is such a phased project too, maybe we work it in. Maybe Jim phasing wise, I know phase one will be primarily coming in off of Mill Street, <clears throat> and maybe phase as soon as phase two opens up, the Mechanic Street intersection is going to be open. So maybe we think a little bit along those lines as far as whatever conditions that you impose maybe only exist through phase one. Right. So it would be, you're saying just Mill Street. Is that, is what you're yeah. referring to, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. I think that's what the board is saying. I don't think they have any opposition to you taking a left on, on Mechanic Street at the, both the, basically the both signalized intersections. Uh, is that what right. you're referring to? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think after after phase one, both signalized intersections will, will be up and operational. So yeah, maybe yeah, just that's... during phase one, you make that make that stipulation. Oh, yeah, right. that... absolutely. Because you also have, you know, like you stated before, you're going to have a little room to stockpile while yeah. you're cutting, while you start in phase two and open that, yeah. that roadway. So yeah, I'm certainly yeah. in agreement with that. Uh, Brian, I, I do see, uh, I think uh, town administrator Dennis Frank has his hand up. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, go ahead, Dennis. Hey, Brian. Good Let's evening, go. guys. Good discussion <laughs> hey, tonight. Hey, the only concern I have uh, with uh, not allowing trucks to turn left in there, think about what they're going to have to do. Um, if, they, if they know they're coming back and they know they can't go left onto Mill, they're going up High Street or they're coming down Maple and around that way. I just think they're looking at alternate routes that may be less palatable. So um, I, I like the idea of discouraging them or, or not, not allowing them during rush hour, but you know, between 9 30, 10 o'clock and three o'clock in the afternoon, I don't think it's as much of an issue, but they, they're going to have to come some way to get back in there. And, 
it's going to be cut throughs around town. That's the only concern I have. I, I know there's no easy answer to it, but just something to think about. Yeah, it's a good point. No, you're right. Cause they can just cut down high street and make the loop up and around and yeah, it's just, so there it, is a, there is actually two lanes when you're coming uh, from the North into Bellingham center. So, and the, uh, the left I, and the, the lane that's going straight uh, to the left uh, usually isn't as long. So it's, it, it isn't quite as bad for that left-hand turn onto Maple onto Mill Street, actually, as if you were going straight up 126 towards Woonsocket. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Yeah. At, at five o'clock in the afternoon, it's a problem, but I, I don't think it is up until, you know, three o'clock or 3.30 or something like that. If it was, you know, allowed between certain hours or, or something like that might make more sense. But that, that was just my observation. I'm going to, I'm going to mute myself and get out of here. <laughs> Let you continue. Thanks, Thanks, Dennis. Thanks Dennis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is yep. it possible to? All right, let, let's you know, not put a restriction out right now and see how it goes. And if it becomes an issue, can we readdress it? Is that possible? I don't know, Jim. Is that is that possible? Uh, I mean, we can. Cer I can certainly think draft up some language that you know, uh, you know, if if. We could leave it to the safety officer that if it becomes a concern, um, he could raise it with the board and bring the applicant back in, uh, certainly. And if and if it is an issue, there could be a remedy, much like we did with the last, uh, you know, decision. Yeah, I was thinking something along those lines. If we get any multiple complaints about either the dust or the traffic, um, you know, we can revisit the plan. Okay, that makes sense. I, I mean, I'm I'm on board with that. I mean. <laughs> the town manager say he doesn't believe it's an issue and the applicants. So, I mean, I'm open to allowing it and then, you know, readdressing it if it does become an issue. So I mean, uh, how, lo how long before uh, the mechanics, uh, mechanic street side opens? So that's going to be the end of phase one, uh, Arthur. It's um, probably going to be about a year, year and a half before the entire, it's about, 4,800 linear feet is constructed. So I'm going to guess about a year. All right. Uh, how many trucks during that year do you think? How many trips? Mm. About 100 yeah. a week if we're looking at the at the figures that you gave uh, last time. 27,000 yeah. trucks. And if you, if you narrow that down per week, it's 100. And actually, that's, if, if you really want to start doing math, that's 20 ins and 20 outs a day. Right. I mean, is if we're using five full work days and hundred yep. trucks a week. Yeah, that's, that's right. a, a good ballpark. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Jim, we can we can condition that if there's a complaint that's that somehow there's a review. Yeah, I would say that. I would say based on complaints, it, it, I would say I would recommend um, a staff review um, because. To be honest with you, uh, uh, every truck that drives down, you know, a, a road, uh, some, either me or the safety officers or somebody's getting a complaint. So, uh, I think maybe it's a staff review, and if it becomes a real issue, a new, uh, you know, deemed by either me, the building inspector, the safety officer, whoever you want, uh, then we could bring it to the ZBA for your consideration. Um, and much like the last decision, you know, we could. Uh, work on remedies to to solve that that issue, and if um, the applicant doesn't comply, then it would be a violation of this permit, which you know could lead to either a cease and desist or fines or what have you. But we but we can do that. We can condition that in in the decision. Absolutely, Brian. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I thought. Brian. <laughs> okay. So it's conditioned based upon, I guess, your recommendations. It's discretion. But discretion at the yeah uh, so to, just to touch on hours um i think the decision said between nine and four do do we want to have any sort of consideration for um you know nothing like if all the trucks get in there at during rush hour and then they wait till nine and, and then they get out are we avoiding any problems um or you know, how do we deal with that with, with the trucks arriving prior to nine, but not departing before nine? Are we really solving any problems? Just a thought. 
for discussion. So I'm guessing that the trucks leave full and they come back empty. So at the end of the day, they just can, they, are they leaving the trucks there? So therefore that they don't have to have that extra trip out? I would think not. It's probably gonna be a private company. The, the driver's gonna bring their trucks back. They're probably gonna come in empty then go all full. I'm just guessing. I think that's probably correct. Yeah, I think depending upon the, the off takers, uh, they're not gonna leave their vehicles on the property. All right. Yeah, well, the ones I've dealt with, they're usually impatient and don't wanna wait there idling because it costs money. Yeah, so to that point, Brian, <clears throat> I don't think there'll be many vehicles coming in at seven and loading up by 7.30 and then waiting an hour and a half to leave. So I think if the condition is to to come and go between nine and three, they'll show up at nine and, and leave at three, not, not show up at seven. Okay, fair enough. That's a good question. And I think we're covered with the complaints. Mm. If there are mm. enough complaints, we can revisit it. Brian, were you okay with the nine to four or do you like 9.30 to 3.30 or do you want to change that at all? Or, you know, just to make sure we don't hit the rush hour traffic. Are you talking to me or Ryan? Yeah, you, Mr. Salisbury. <laughs> That's much better, thank you. <laughs> um, I think that I think that the rush hour and the school traffic and everything is, I mean, four o'clock is crazy time. Um, but I don't think we can close the window too much, you know? What do you think? So I, ideally the 9.30 to 3.30 would be better, but I, I understand what you're saying as well. I'm comfortable with that because that way you space the times that the trucks enter and leave a bit more you're and you constrict it. What are you comfortable with, Ryan? I'm, I'm comfortable with nine to four personally to, to, to let them, you know, give them enough time to do it and also space the trucks out so that they're not all leaving at the same time or getting in at the same time. That's my personal opinion. Got it. Okay. So I guess with that, um, there are any other discussion points then? I don't have any. I, I want to condition it that uh, Mark Allen has to haul out most of the <laughs> most of the one one uh, pickup truck at a time. One pickup truck at a time. <laughs> <laughs> at mid between between two a.m. and five a.m. <laughs> I'm up anyway. I got a young kid, a uh, young child. <laughs> so just one more thing that uh, we talked about: safety officer. Is that going to be a condition? So I have, so I've, I've nixed the whole no left turn, but the amendment is to add um, uh, some wordsmithing of if there are tr traffic or dust concerns uh, um, expressed to the traffic safety officer, building inspector, or other uh, town employees that, um, you know, it'll be those concerns could be brought to the zoning board of appeals for review, and uh, and a remedy it will be established uh, with the applicant. And if that remedy is not uh, completed by a certain amount of time, um, I think in the last one we had three months, but maybe we do it a little quicker th than that, maybe a month uh, by the next meeting, perhaps, then that would be a, a violation of this permit. That's good. So, um, but there's going to be somebody there all the time directing traffic with the trucks coming in now, correct? I don't like, believe so, no. Uh, would we not want that as a condition? Do we need it between nine and four? That's the, that's the question. Well, uh, uh, well uh, going, taking that a step further, as Dennis mentioned, maybe we are better having that left-hand turn in uh, so that they're not using Maple Street and High Street. Well, yes, I, I think Jim put that in there, but um, by taking out the whole word left-hand turn, um, I, I, we don't want to eliminate allowing them to take a left to get out of there. Right, but you, you did so, have to take a left going in though, Jim, right, or not? 
Right. Yeah. So I, I thought we had nixed the no left turn in, in. Uh, yes. at this time. Yeah, just, but if it becomes a concern, then right. we would bring the halt. We would bring the applicant in and say, you know, it's just not working out. You guys are causing an issue at this intersection. We got to find another route. Yeah. And maybe Jim, you can reference that left turn in when you say if there's any uh, complaints on traffic dust, including but not limited to left hand turns from. Yep. Something to that effect. Yep. Okay. And I hate to bring up another point because we really don't want taking the left out of there. And I agree wholeheartedly with that. Um, but if let's just say it is Kimball, um, are they going to be skirting all around the town trying to get back to their plant? I mean, right. in my mind, I it, my mind I'm running roads right now saying, okay, they can get down Depot Street and hook around and get back down. But if they're going to Kimball, left hand turn out, it is the best way to go back. So are we creating a, and I don't want to create this issue of letting them take a left out of there, but we create issues all over town, only sending right if they are going back south. Well, if, it, if they're going down hot for that, that's not a bad route back to Kimball's. No, it's just not the most direct route. No. I'll just throw this out because I'm guilty of it, um, especially, but sometimes we as boards overthink things. Okay, um, gotcha. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> Who are you, Brian? Uh, including me. I would, yeah, I would recommend just that language about the, the traffic and dust concerns. And I certainly will express the left turns as a, a kind of a, a highlight. Um, but I think that's a good remedy because, you know, if there are concerns, this is going to be a long process. So, I mean, if there are concerns, uh, we, we certainly won't hesitate to haul them in and, and bring them before you. We don't want a traffic cop out there, though. Huh? You don't think it's necessary, anybody? No, I, I think it's going to be too long of a period of time to impose yeah. that upon him. I mean, how many trips? I mean, I guess from what you're saying, that sounds like you know, 20 in, 20 out. Yeah, having a cut. Um, a lot of trucks. Yeah, well, if, if, we, if we're doing real math, and again, to Brian's point, I'm not wanting to go too far with it, and we're talking 20, maybe 25 trucks a day, um, we, we're on triaxles out of there at the most. I mean, yeah. I would I would say that that could easily be a good remedy if there is issues and and with this condition you know so if there are major issues and you and they still want to take the left turn in you know you, you could easily say you know the remedy is fine you have to have a, an officer there because it's causing an issue. Perfect. Good idea. Yeah. Okay. Does anyone uh, should we make a motion? Anyone from the public again? I'll open it up to the public. Uh, is anyone on the public uh, have any comments? Doesn't look like it. Motion to close the hearing. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Discussion? Any more discussion? Oh, we need a motion first or not? I'll make a motion. Motion to uh, uh, grant the permit as requested with the uh, changes that were made in the discussion. Second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do we, no discussion now? I was just asking. <laughs> no. <laughs> so uh, traditionally it's uh, a, a motion. Barbara two is a law. Yeah, motion, second, discussion, vote. Right. <laughs> gotcha, okay. So. <laughs> So we, we go ahead and wrap that one up. That, okay. Yeah, we, we discussed it. <laughs> Calling for the vote. Got a bright call again. All right. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Mark, good luck. Thank you very much. I'll get, I'm going to go buy a new pickup truck. <laughs> <laughs> a really big one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you more. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll got a mental note for that motion, second discussion, and then I got yeah, that's Robert's on. rules of order, Brian. <laughs> I'll get you a copy, Brian. It's all right. <laughs> we'll post a note in front of your computer. Yeah, that would help. <laughs> um, all right. The next one, I'll hand it over to uh, Peter. Okay. Um, like you. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate it. 
Jim, what do we have tonight with Lakeview Estates? It's our monthly wake up of Sean Malone. And <laughs> our... <laughs> so, hey, Sean. So at, at our last meeting, um, the uh, Sean and, and his team had provided an update that they were wrap, or getting close to starting construction of the drainage. Um, it's been a it's been a pretty promising uh, month in terms of weather and constructions. Uh, uh, notwithstanding the last week or so, and um, I, they have made quite a bit of progress. Uh, I was out there inspecting. I know our conservation agent's been out there, our DPW inspector's been out there, and our, our construction monitoring agent has been out there several times uh, reviewing the progress that's been made, um, and I'm sure Sean can provide us with an update on where they stand today. Yep, ha happy to do that. Good evening, all. Um, so as Jim mentioned, uh, we were able to get a good early start on the construction a little earlier than anticipated. We've had some good weather, except for the last week or so. Um, Bafford kind of doubled down on the efforts out there. They had two crews running most of the time. Um, so happy to report that um, this is pretty much 90% complete. Um, I talked to Wellington, the construction manager today, um, they're not going to be able to do much tomorrow with some rain, but he should finish up the grading work and the erosion control matting on the, the newly graded slope um, on Saturday. And at that point, all the drainage infrastructure is already in, all the pipes, all the catch basins, um, the, um, the uh, new outlet to the, the basin is in, the head wall, the riprap, everything's in. So. Uh, as I said, we should be done on Saturday and then we'll commence our uh, monitoring period to make sure that the um, grass and hydro seed on the slopes takes and um, we should be wrapped up here, I, I would expect, in a, a month or so. But as of, as of this Saturday, we don't expect any more construction activity. All right, thanks, Sean. And, and I'll be honest with you, I, I have paid attention to what's going on down there um, and I have seen a lot of progress. I do have a quick question, if you don't mind. Yes. Um, I swung down this morning, and it's it's just probably my lack of knowledge, but I noticed the main retention pond had water in it, and then you have a stone type wall with another pond with water in it. Mm -hmm. Is that part of the new design? Having can you that, explain that, please? Yeah. So, and that was actually part of the original design. We modified it a little bit. So what it is, it's a small basin that's closest to Candlelight Drive. Yes. And that's a uh, four bay, a sediment four bay. So the idea is that the stormwater goes into that basin first, it settles, it allows some of the solids to settle out and then overflows through that stone berm into the, the main detention area. So by that point, the, the water's pretty cleaned out and then it will exit the pond um, from that main detention area. So okay, it's, a two I, I stage, know, it's a two stage basin. I noticed both of them are quite full this morning. Mm -hmm. Is that due to the rain we've had for the past, well, I think the weatherman said nine days now we've had rain? Yeah, yeah, and, and, and I think they also had the uh, outlet um, plugged up a little bit just so that uh, any sediment from the exposed soils wasn't getting out and into the lake. Okay. Yeah, but if it's working, why would you have it blocked? Well, because we still have a lot of the, that, that sediment four bay was just reconstructed. So we want to okay. make sure that, you know, there isn't any loose soils and things like that. As I said, it, it's not a hundred percent complete. We're about 90% complete, but by Saturday, um, it should be all all wrapped up and fully operational. And what was the the dig on um, Silver Lake Lane uh, this morning that I was watching? Uh, I think they were installing the final catch basin structure over okay. to the um, uh, uh, from the corner there into the basin. Okay, because they're going right down the middle of the road. Yeah. Oh, that was that was for the overflow pipe, the the structure for the overflow pipe. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, any other board members got any questions, comments? Let's open it up. Yeah. 
Brian, you're way too quiet. What do you got? Which Brian? Me? <laughs> Mr. Salisbury. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> No, I'm happy to hear that there's progress being made and that uh, we can finally see light at the end of the tunnel. So I, I think that's um, very good. I'm, I'm curious what Brian, Mr. Wright's observations are uh, living there. Yeah, I'm going to get to him. <laughs> yeah, that's my, with all the rain, I was wondering if there were any events uh, of kind of like flooding or, and did anything get into the lake? Is that the reason you plugged? Um, the system for a little bit to let it let the sediments settle rather than go to the lake. Was there an instance where sediments went into the lake before you needed that? No, no, not not to my knowledge. We didn't have any uh, issues in in BSC group. The town's uh, peer review engineer has been out there a couple times monitoring and has issued some reports. They haven't um, found any issues out there, so uh, everything's been been going well as as far as I know. Yeah, I, I will add that our our town our engineered BSC group has uh, done some inspections and provided a, a, a lot of guidance. And um, so far, yeah, no no major concerns. There are some tweaks um, on, in the field that they have suggested uh, to Sean and his team. And I know we're uh, that's that ten percent kind of gap that's not quite complete just yet. But uh, other than that, yeah, they have. Uh, have reported back uh, promisingly. Glad to hear that. Question? Yeah, go ahead. I... Um, is, with all the construction that, and so forth, is there any silt that will need to be cleaned out of any of the basins, of either of the basins? Um, I don't know that uh, for sure, but I am scheduled to go out there on Wednesday to kind of do a final inspection. Um, so if I do observe anything like that, that, that will be reported and, and taken care of. And I'll, I'll certainly have our team also hover over Sean and, and uh, report as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do we have any neighbors that um, observed anything, have any concerns? Before you open it up to the, uh, the public, Peter, one more question, if I may. No, they not. <laughs> uh, unrelated, totally off the wall right now, but there was a uh, believe mitigation for a widening of, I believe it was, was either, either either Easy Street or Douglas Drive. What's happening with that? Are we still expecting that to happen? I could speak to that. Um, so actually, you're right. There, there was mitigation for Easy and I believe Douglas for those intersections. If you actually go into that, those neighborhoods, you'll see that the whole neighborhood's been repaved. Um, and that's because um, there's been, there was some discussions with Fafford's team uh, to uh, transfer those intersection widenings to a comparable mitigation for paving. And the reason for that is uh, we successfully got a grant from the state to improve both of those intersections along with 126 from Douglas Drive all the way to the town center. Um, it's about an $8 million grant from the state that's gonna be starting in about a year and a half. Uh, so rather than have Fafford do it and then us rip it up, we asked for them to transfer that to something else. And, and that turned into a significant amount of paving that was, you know, dollar for dollar, essentially. So the widening will not be taking place then, or, or is it just? N not by Fafford's team, but by, uh, by the state. Oh, okay, great. And I, I believe that paving is either being done or is complete, right? Yeah, that, that is complete. And I believe the town is looking to fill in any gaps that may have been, uh, that may remain. But yeah, that, that was completed last session. And then, um, but we did ask for Fabricin to come back around. There's some hydro seeding that needs to take place in, in certain areas. Okay. Anyone else for openness to the public? Oh. Good, Brian. Mr. Wright. All right, uh, Brian Wright, 99 Silver Lake Road. Um, well, now that Art mentioned that, yeah, I'm curious about, so Jim, do you know Northern Light, Lights Way? Is that one of the ones that was ever looked at and for having any needs to be widened? Because that street always just seems 
Is that yep. supposed to be a one-way or a two-way? Because that one. Yeah, it's a it's a one-way road, but uh, it doesn't make a lick of sense for it to be a one-way road. Um, I assume, um, and actually, I I know because I went back to the minutes once I saw the road constructed and tried to see what why this is here. Um, you know, based on concerns from the neighbors and art, you might remember it. Um, based on the concerns from the neighbors uh, as a cut-through neighborhood. Uh, the board asked for it to be one way. Um, there isn't any signage to date uh, of it as a one way. You know, I'm, I'm hesitant to push for a one way there. Uh, all that does is create just them to go a, the loop of candlelight um, to, instead of just going straight. Well, I can uh, tell you everyone, you, it's used as a two way all the time. I think everyone, myself included, everyone just goes straight through there as opposed to as a cut through. And I, I would say that proves that we're designing our roads too wide. <laughs> it, it works just fine, uh, except for, honestly, there is a turning radius issue. Uh, you kind of have to, when we do it, we notice that it's like you do have a hesitation, a little pause when a car is coming to be like, yep. okay, we'll let you kind of go first. You, you drive more safely yeah. in, a, in a narrow road. <laughs> and uh, we will have the safety officer addressing you going down a one-way road, first thing you <laughs> I know. In all seriousness, um, what have you seen being a resident down there? Um, any major issues? Uh, are things feeling better? No, it it definitely does. It seems like they're it's it's looking good. Um, it's just kind of that same kind of you know deja vu type of thing, or like a Groundhog's Day, where you're kind of like, okay, it looks good. Like, hopefully, it functions well. There hasn't been any issues though. So I guess my biggest concerns would be the um, keeping an eye out on the hydro seeding because the weather's been good, but to make sure that they continue to water it so that it sticks because that's definitely been an issue in the past. Um, the other question I would have is, um, so Sean, how far ahead of schedule are they? Because it definitely seems like they moved really fast. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, we're probably about... Uh three weeks ahead, two or three weeks ahead of schedule. So the one concern I would have with that is in the past, Fafford has a typical thing of where he does nothing until he's, his back's against the wall and then he sends out these guys to crank it out. So my concern again goes to, I guess what I've said before is that trusting the, um, the town's kind of peer reviewer or people on the ground to make sure they're installing stuff right. Because they, I think Fafford is notorious for just sending a couple guys out of a pick, pickup truck or whatever, or who knows, to throw the stuff in there. And in the, the past redesign, they, you know, didn't follow the as builds or they did, I mean, not the as builds, but they didn't follow the design for a lot of these things and inverts were off, elevations were off. So that's, that's my ongoing concern is that it's like, okay, it's, my initial thing was like, they're moving fast, but then I'm like, are they going too fast? That it's like, you know, that, they just crank it out that it's, you know, better to have it done right than having them just crank it out as fast as possible so they can skip on to the next thing and start building. I, I think, Sean, you, you had mentioned that they committed two complete crews to the project, so just one. That's why you were ahead of schedule. Yeah, that's right. And and just real quick to address um, Brian's uh, comment a little bit, as opposed to the work that was done, the, year or two ago there's a new construction manager at Fafford who's dealing with this and in, in my opinion is um, doing a good job on, on staying on top of these things and, and following the plan versus previous people didn't necessarily do it as, as Brian pointed out so um, I think there's been a little bit of a uh, an improvement operationally there as well which is which has helped with this project and where we are now. Yeah, it's because it's, I think, again, it seems like everything's great. It's just the, um, I guess, just hoping, that, and it looks like it is being done right this time. I would just say, I guess, to the board, just to whatever you decide tonight, it's good to at least hold something that you have some kind of, you know, just to, just to be wary about still leaving, so, that it's not all completely done, because I know the hydro seating that in the past has always been an issue. So I just want to, it looks like they're at that 90%, but the big unknown is um, 
how it's, you know, all the, the regrading and about where there's steeper slope, is that really going to hold again? Or are we going to have washout issues like previously? So I guess that would be my only concern to make sure that everything really takes root and that the finished grade is really all set, set and done. Because now it's kind of more the maintenance. It's more about the making sure it's watered and making sure that all the grade establishes itself. So I, I actually, Sean, can I ask a quick question? I mean, right now you, you've got it plugged. What, what's the intended time to unplug it and let's see the system work? Well, and, and, and plug may be the wrong word and, and I'll take a look at it Wednesday, but oftentimes they put, you know, some filter fabric over it so it, it would slow the drain of it, um, okay. but, but it would still go down. Um, but I, I would suspect I'll, I'll, I'll have a better understanding when I get out there Wednesday and, and see things. But I, I would suspect that um, after this weekend, after they finish all the matting on the hill um, to prevent that erosion and, and the, be able to keep the hydro seat on there, we'll be able to take all that stuff off. Well, I, I'm just, uh, as I'm looking to, I'm supposed to get one heck of a rain, rainy day on Monday. Mm -hmm. It would really be nice to see that baby functioning. Yep. Yep, and that's uh, that was Wellington's uh, point when we spoke today, is that he wants to be able to get all that slope, all that exposed soil, um, hydro seeded and matted, so it's covered, um, which is something that wasn't done before. So that'll, that'll certainly um, help from past experiences. Yeah, because I'll just say from the, I mean, everyone on, who's been on the board through all this, but Previously, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure Brian Salisbury and Art and I don't know if Peter was, yeah, you, you, you were around, I think, from the last iteration. But remember how long they talked about with the germination and that was months on months on months. So that's my only thing I would caution about. Because well, they had down, that. They're putting down seed on top of snowstorms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but last time it was like, oh, they, they hydro seeded it. And then it was like months on months on months before it finally... It well, Sean like mentioned that the well, Sean mentioned that they're putting the matting over it, so that should that should help it a lot. Oh, right. Yeah, it yeah. seems like they're doing it right this time. I just yeah, again, I mean, I just it'd be great to have something you could hold to to just see like okay, the next month or whatever that it's really starting to grow okay. in. Okay, so Jim, what exactly do we face here tonight with? Yep, so uh, it's our typical extension, uh, but also we're talking about um, uh, recommendation of uh, additional building permits being released to the building inspector. I talked with Tim earlier today. Uh, he has granted those 18 that the, the board has allowed for to date. Uh, so the full 18 have been handed out um, and there's 22 that remain. Uh, I will note as well, if the board is considering granting some additional building permits, um, if we could at least uh, maybe stipulate uh, one or two or however, whatever, a good percentage uh, that the affordables be included in that. Um, the, uh, with 22 remaining, I think we still have something like 10 affordables remaining to be constructed. Um, so that's, we, we don't want it to be the last thing that's, that's being built. So in, 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 I'm sorry, uh, just, to, to address that point, just real quick, Jim, I, I, I did have that conversation with Fafford a little bit, and that is something that they're doing. It, I think it's for every five units, they have to do one affordable. So that's yep. kind of been in the mix, I believe. Yeah, it, it's good if it is in the mix now. It wasn't in the past because we just got the monitoring report and it's uh, the percentage just isn't lining up. Yeah, well, if you got 22 left and, and 10 left, that need to be affordable. That math doesn't work. Oh, and there's 10 left, yeah. Yeah. Um, Sean, of, of the 18 permits you currently have, how many foundations have been dug? I think all 18 of those. I, I did take note that quite a few were being worked on. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll open up to the board what your thoughts are here. I, I certainly have one myself, but um, anyone have any comments, thoughts on more building permits? Yeah, if I may, I'm really uh, happy with uh, the percentage they did so quickly when they were, you know, when Fafford really wants to get things done, seems like it gets done uh, quicker than even expected. 
Um, I'm glad that we have uh, boots on the ground and the inspection uh, reports have been coming in good. Um, and of course, you know, I'm not, I know the board, the rest of the members have uh, dealt with this project for a lot longer than I have, but uh, uh, hearing what Brian um, White said, I agree that we can't give too much leeway at this point, uh, pending seeing the final result. So um, I'm, I'm good with uh, usually limiting, um, probably perhaps putting more affordables under uh, today's decision, but uh, I'd like to hear what the rest of the board has to say in terms of the number of units. So it, it just going by the numbers, every other house should be affordable. So, yep. we would agree yeah, so I, I, I didn't confirm 10, but I'm pretty certain it's pretty close. So it might be, you know, eight, nine or 10, um, but it's definitely a high number that we were concerned of. So it would be something close to them. So if, if I'll throw my two cents at this point, um, yeah, I know we're definitely going to hold some permits back until this is proven that this works, it's up and running, and everyone feels nice and comfy. Um, I would be of the opinion to release 10, but five of them be affordable. And that's just my opinion. And I'm open to discussion with any board member that has anything better or worse to say. I would agree with that, Peter. The only thing that I, that I might add, because we're not sure on how many affordables are left, maybe we could make it four affordables instead of uh, five, but um, I'm fine either way. Mr. Salisbury, you're being quiet over there. I, I was just curious, Sean, does that work for Fafford? If there was some mix of affordables and it has to. I yeah, no, I think that's reasonable. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I think I could um I think five and five. Um however they want to stagger it, every other one or however that works. I, I personally think be because we've been behind the eight ball with them that, that definitely has to be a a push at this release. All right, I agree. I agree. Jim? Yep. Oh, Tim, hey. How you doing? Um, so there's eight affordables. There's only eight left. Only eight left. Okay, so, could, you know, I look at, do half of them, do six four. and four. Mm -hmm. Let's get a commitment to get these affordables built. Yeah, let's get five, five and five. You still want to stick with five and five? You like even numbers, don't you? You know, five and five because we want to make sure they're done before the project's done. You know what I mean? If if we have any input and, and Sean is agreeable to it, five and five I think is is a good thing for the town. It would be nice to see the affordables all done before the rest of them are done. Yeah, because then there's no incentive to finish. And it's what the project's based on is affordable housing. Right. So I'm in with the five and five. Likewise. So would it be a recommendation to continue and extend to uh, June 3rd with uh, a recommendation to release 10 building permits, five of them being affordable? So moved. Second. Uh, all those in favor? You also can take a vote. Aye. 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 So just, just for the future, move. Second His discussion. Gotcha. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my post it though. Any discussion before we vote? No, thank you. I feel comfortable with that. I'll call a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So passes. All right. Thank you all. Uh, have a good Aye. night, and we'll uh, we'll see you in a month. Hey, Sean, Appreciate thank, your good work, thank John. You thank you. This out. Thank you. It's, um, it's, it's looking much better. All right. Good to hear. Thank you. Great thank work. you. All right. Cool. Nice job, Peter. Except I need that, that post. Except at the end. <laughs> We're just going to write up at the end. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the next item on the agenda, the Curtis Department's comprehensive permit in substantial modification re request. Uh, Jim, is this, do I motion? Is this a new hearing or is this, could you give us No, some so this is, uh, this is just a uh, general business item. Um, so what's going on here is 
Um, the Curtis Apartments is gearing up, uh, you know, going down our checklist in our decision. Um, and one of them is a regulatory agreement. So this is, honestly, this is an, um, an administrative action um, and through a 40B comprehensive permit, it's uh, much similar to um, what the planning board does as a minor modification. So it doesn't really need a, a hearing per se. Um, and so what the request is here, and it, and it actually stems from our uh, request, the town's request is, I, I believe we at, uh, provided you with a, an email from uh, Sharon Everett, who's our, uh, one of our town council. Um, in reviewing the decision again, um, as we're nearing construction, she noted that uh, condition four um, has a different framework than she would have preferred. Um, and she requested that if the board is okay with it um, and the applicant's okay with it or the developer's okay with it, then we would modify uh, this regulatory agreement framework. And so basically what's going on here is how we have it phrased in the decision is a regulatory agreement is in place with the applicant um, and that regulatory agreement spells out kind of the nuts and bolts for how the affordables are, are provided and all that uh, and monitored, et cetera. Um, and so the, the developer has an agreement with the town and then the developer has an agreement with DHCD, which is the Department of Housing and Community Development, which is the oversight from the state. Um, how KP Law, our town council, has liked to do this for other communities and for some time now is kind of bring it all together uh, because uh, the state has a lot of, of concerns and they have a lot of teeth in, the, in it. Um, and we want to make sure that we're going kind of side by side with them. So this is just a, a, a tripartite agreement to really just, uh, you know, the town, DHCD, and the developer all in one whole agreement. Um, and they've already had a lot of good discussions and DHCD and town council have uh, really come to come to terms already. Uh, they just want to make sure that uh, we can, the board is okay with it to making this, uh, what's called an insubstantial modification to condition four. What's the condition? So the condition is simply the, the regulatory agreement. So it's the, that right now it spells out that the town will have a regulatory agreement with the developer. And then the HCD will have a regulatory agreement with the developer. And when there's conflicts, uh, they would work those out, uh, but what they what town council would prefer to it to say is that the town DHCD and the developer will have a regulatory agreement uh, so that it's one document essentially as opposed to the two um, potentially conflicting documents. Okay, cool. so we need some sort of motion Jim. Yeah, if, if you're okay with the, this modification, it's just uh, I move to, to grant the insubstantial modification to uh, condition four. So moved. Discussion. Okay, discussion? <laughs> Good man, Brian. <laughs> I, I feel Almost. like it's just skipping a step, right? It's like trying not to double the work. It's just putting them both together and uh, having one report rather than two. Um, is there any repercussion or um, any liability? No, town, town, town Council recommends it. Uh, yeah, this, so. this, yeah, this stems from Town Council recommending. They think it's less li uh, less concern concerning okay. this. But. Okay. If Brian's good with it, I'm good with it. <laughs> yeah. Motion's on the table and seconded, right? All right, yep. all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Mm -hmm. That passes. So the last item is minutes. Uh, I just have one thing that uh, uh, Peter was the one that was uh, um, chairing the meeting for uh, Silver Lake and not I. You don't want to take credit for that? All right. uh, <laughs> I, Peter deserves all the credit. <laughs> I got it. All right, thank you. Motion accept the minutes as amended. Second. Discussion. <laughs> now you now you're just. Now I'm going to do it every time. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, interesting point of order, though. When someone moves to adjourn the meeting, there's no discussion. Oh, see now I need another post-it. 
Look it up. It doesn't, and it also doesn't need a second, if I'm correct. Well, you need a second. Are you sure? Well, then anybody can just get up and say, meeting's done. Then you have nice. to vote on it. Well, meeting's done. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got to vote on this one first. <laughs> all right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All those opposed? Passes. Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, you appreciate it.